Do you think you'll ever let it go gray? I knew you were going to say that. Absolutely not. <laughs> For me, looking great for my age isn't really what I look like, it's what I feel like in this look. Stacy D, 48. When did you start modeling? Um, when I was 23. I've been at QVC for roughly 23 years. I never thought I'd be here this long, but um, you know, I had been here for a while and my dad was like, so Stace, what are you gonna do afterwards? Cause you can't model forever. And I was like, really daddy? I, I, I think maybe I can do it for a while. with antioxidants, sunflower oil, rosemary leaf extract, because we're about to This is a really fresh look that you can get with bare minerals all over face colors, eye colors, and just by adding a little bit of mascara. Oh, Stacy, that looks so pretty. And then I fill in a little yeah. bit. Mm -hmm. And oh then if goodness. I want to, you can even blend. So I'm gonna do a little lighter with the with the gen news that are coming up. Which it is. Maybe I should just explain. Yeah. Natural curly hair, right? Yes. So she just perfected it, and that's what's even here now, being my age, I'm working with girls who are, you know, they bring their homework in, which is, it's adorable. <laughs> <laughs> QVC has just given women, models, um, an opportunity to grow and share their experiences through the stages and ages of our life. And the viewers, I think they see that, they relate to us, they like that, they know when we have children and when we get married and they celebrate with us and it's a very cohesive community and I'm glad that I didn't bail at 25 like my dad suggested I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you never leave the house without? I never leave the house without sunscreen. Um, I use Elemis um, because they have SPF 30 and it is such a light formulation that you don't even feel it. I know some people, they feel like it's too heavy, it's too greasy. And I know specifically for women of color, it can be, it'll leave a cast on your skin, a gray cast, a white cast. This doesn't have that. So on a day like today, it's gorgeous outside. Um, I use a fluffy brush and I use um, a solid foundation. Um, I use... I use a lot of different ones, depending upon the time of year. Uh, in the summertime, really, I love a powder um, or a solid. I use Bare Minerals sometimes, and this one happens to be It Cosmetics Celebration Foundation Illumination, because it gives me a little bit of a glow, which I love. You were saying about how long you've been at QVC. Mm -hmm. We do hire such a wide range of ages. Yeah. But yeah. it's an anomaly, isn't it? It's definitely... Um, Kind of like an outlier because people have a very specific idea of what they think modeling is right they think it's um the catwalk it's 17 year olds it's it's maybe they think of it as catalog work but at qvc there's a little bit of all of that right and i think that's why so many of us love it and have been here for so long because you're not in a box if i was a runway model if i had gone up to new york and i was ripping up the runway with all the designers i would have been done a long time ago we have all shapes color sizes um, age ranges. There are people that have been here that have retired. We have models here that are in their 70s and that's amazing. And I feel like it empowers them. They're not, you know, having to fall into the background of life. I want to be someone that everybody can relate to in one way or another. Maybe you're not as tall as me. Maybe you're not a woman of color. Maybe there are other things that we are not, but we're all women. We all have had some sort of crossover in our experiences in life. And I hope that I can always be approachable, that anybody can approach me, anybody can ask me anything, and that we can have some sort of connection on a human level. I have dark circles. Um, I've, I've always sort of had dark circles, but as I've gotten older, they have too. <laughs> they have gotten older and darker. So um, this one I like, it's a really light formula. And it just kind of brightens up, you know, on a day where I'm just trying to take it easy and trying to look fresh and again, approachable. I want it to look natural. I just want to make my dark circles disappear. I don't want to look necessarily contoured or chiseled and I'm not really great at that anyway. So two seconds, I've covered up my dark circles. Um, and then 
I'm ready to go on and apply some color. I do sometimes feel like for myself personally, the more I put on, the more it can emphasize like mm -hmm. my age in a way. Mm -hmm. Right, well, there's a, a level of confidence that comes with every, I think, level of being dolled up. I like that I've kind of stepped into this place in my life in my 40s where no one's telling me how I have to do it. And there's enough tools available to us that I can pick and choose. So if I want to go bold, I can go bold. I have to do it a little bit more subtly now um, because I'm in my 40s. There's definitely some looks that I would have pulled off in my 20s and 30s even that right now I'm, I'm like, that's a little bit much, but I can still have fun with color. I can still have fun with even lashes or a bold lip and just do it in a way that I've adapted for me and that I've become comfortable in. Let's do my brows. As I get older, as I notice some changes in my face, I do have to make some adjustments and that's fine. But when you've known how to do something one way for a long time, it can be a little tricky to figure out, all right, how do I do this differently? So I'm working on my brows right now. I almost never do a really strong brow anymore. Whereas when I was in my 20s, in my 30s, I was all about a really sculptured, really structured brow. And I found that the more I did that and the older I got, with the changes in my face, it just felt forced and even a little garish at times. So now, no matter what I'm doing with color on my face, whether it's a bold eye, a bold lip, I've always got a more natural, subtle brow. And I think there's, there's something going on in makeup right now that is supporting that as well. But regardless, I've let trends guide me, but never dictate what I'm gonna do. It's whatever works for my face. So that's about as dark as I go and as bold as I go with my brows. It's kind of just my brow, but finished. Do you find that most of the trends are targeted towards younger people and don't apply to you? Yeah, they, I definitely think that the trends are skewed and they're they're marketing, they're going after the younger you, younger buyers, um, the younger marketplace, that demographic. And then the colored mascaras started to come in and they were doing blue and green. And I was like, I'm not doing that. And I always use black um, mascara. Some people do black on the top and brown on the bottom. I've heard a lot of older, more mature women say that they do that. I like that idea, especially I think if you're a fair skin tone, I think black, um, can be harsh, at least on the bottom of your eye. It's funny you say that because I have been scouring the internet lately for brown mascara. See, it's kind of disappeared, right? It, it was, I remember doing, you know, Bare Mineral shows and uh, Laura Geller shows where they had your choice of black or brown mascara. I even remember when I was younger, I bought like Auburn. Yeah. Yeah, because you're, you know, it, I think there's, it's fine to go with what works with your, the color of your hair. If you're a redhead or if you're blonde, then maybe brown is better for you. I personally, you know, I'm a brunette, always have been. I had some blonde highlights there for a minute, but that changed. Um, I actually started going blonde because I started going gray. It started coming in and I would have to color and then all of a sudden, hello, middle age, it really started to come in. And I was coloring my hair, but I was realizing I was having to color it more um, frequently because since I have dark hair, when the gray starts to come in, you really see it. So I have not colored my hair in a really long time. And when the pandemic was going on, you couldn't get into the salon. I was like, this is crazy. So I use, um, I use this Calista Embellish Root Touch Up and I use it in dark brown. And it just allows me to kind of go around because I have a halo of gray hair. So this lets me just go in. Um, I've got some, it's a little bit thinner on my temples than it used to be because. Do you think you'll ever let it go gray? I don't see it for me, but I'll say, I don't see it for me now. And I have no judgment for anyone who does have let their hair go completely gray. I had a friend of mine say maybe 10 years ago, um, 
I bet you'd look amazing if you let your hair grow, go completely gray, but you're too vain for that. And I was like, you're right, I am. But that's today. Today, I'm a little too vain to let my hair go completely gray. My mom did, um, and I loved it on her. I mean, but that's not just vanity. That's just what I think I'll feel most comfortable in. And that just means that's how I feel about it today. And I'm not gonna be pigeonholed into someone saying, well, you said you'd never do that. So what? That's what I felt then. And I feel differently about it today. One of the trends I really love right now is the mm -hmm. Silver Sisters. Yes, and I have to say, I did reconsider it because that trend is happening. But this is a perfect example of how trends come and you evaluate it. Is that for me? Is that something that I could do? Could I work my gray hair into this silver hair trend? And what are those implications for my acting work? I'm sure there's work I could pick up if I went all gray, but I'd be sacrificing some work here. So I'm always trying to be pragmatic. Do you do microdermabrasion or Botox mm, or anything yeah. like that? Because it is kind of a business reason for you. It is. Um, it's so funny because I, I started doing Botox probably late 20s, mid 30s on my forehead. Um, and I thought it was great. And I felt like I had to because I'm a model. And then it became unavailable because of the pandemic. And I noticed that when I started living with my expression lines, I'm. I feel like I'm okay with it. I'm just getting more comfortable every day in my skin. As long as I, I feel like I'm doing what I can do to take care of my skin with sunscreen and I have access to great skincare here, um, that's me doing my part. And if one day I look in the mirror and I feel like I see something I wanna make an adjustment to, then I'll do it. Like I know ageism happens a lot in different careers and I, yeah. I think about it if you are in a certain type of job where most of your coworkers are younger than you. Right, right. I mean, your longevity for this world as a woman is judged by your age or your even your perceived age. And it's not just in modeling and acting. It's across all industries. Every woman is concerned about it. It's something that we all either experience or we have fear of the experience. What we as older women are bringing to the experience for the younger counterparts who are looking to us for our wisdom, for our guidance. I'm like, listen, I've been here. I've seen how this works. I want you to succeed. This is how I think you can do that and give that feedback outside of, you know, being called into HR and yeah. having someone to kind of mentor you. I mean, the idea, I think the, the word mentor has such weight and, and it's such a positive connotation to that word. I definitely help guide the younger models when they come in, you know, whether it's how to do their makeup or, you know, don't get upset if you're booked for a show and you don't get on air. It's not about you and getting airtime. It's about helping to support the brand so that they're successful, because if they're successful, that we're successful. And that's how you make it work. That's how it works for everybody. Yeah, and it's like, the older you get, the more stories you have, stories of mistakes you've made and mm -hmm. triumphs mm -hmm. you've had. Yeah. It goes both ways. Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't, I didn't have that voice when I was 23 when I first started working here. I didn't know what I didn't know, right? So I think people have to start thinking a little bit broader about age and about what it's like um, to bring that experience to the table. And why, why should any of that go to waste? I feel like it's a waste if you're just trying to tamp down the thing that you think is you're supposed to be uncomfortable with. Why are you uncomfortable with how old I am? I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> so another thing that I, I'm pretty passionate about is teeth whitening. <laughs> you have the control to put it where you want, right? So I just roll it on my teeth. And it lets me get, cause it's a brush, I can get all the way in the back, <laughs> all the way. And in between my teeth, it tastes minty. I put it on and then I'm done. And I think it's something that really can either age you if your teeth are stained, because listen, I'm not giving up red wine. I'm not giving up blueberries. I'm not giving up soy sauce. I'm not giving up anything. Coffee, forget about it. I'm not giving up anything that's gonna stain my teeth. 
but I like having that bright white smile because it does, I think it, it reads youthful. It reads health. It reads you take care of yourself. And then, and you don't have to like go back and rinse, right? So that's it. That's done. So I'm now on to my final step, which is my lip. So my favorite lip look is a nude lip. And for a long time, for women of color, that was a challenge because nude meant nude for lighter skin tones. I have a darker skin tone. So a lot of times what nude was looked pink on me. It looked gray on me. It, it just didn't look right. It wasn't giving that seamless look that you're trying to achieve when you're going for a nude lip look. So this is um, Kisser Fixer by Belle, um, Beauty by Belle. And it's just the right tone it's got enough pink. It's got enough brown. So the same three questions I ask everyone. Okay. What was the last makeup tutorial you watched? Um, probably contouring. One day I was in the back and I thought I had my contour looking great and one of the other girls, very matter of fact, said, Stacy, your contour looks very strong. And I was like, oh, well, well okay. <laughs> let, me, let me buff that out. And I appreciate that she said it. And we do that for each other all the time. But that's something that I don't know that I ever look at myself and think, nailed it. What is the most used product in your makeup kit? Um, well, it's between, okay, so it's, sometimes I, I don't wanna leave without my brow. I said I was torn because I do like to, um, even if I'm not gonna wear makeup, um, I'll grab my, my fluffy brush and whatever product is left on the brush from the last time I used the brush, cause don't tell anybody I don't wash my brushes every time I use them. Um, I'll just kind of dust it over my face and there's usually enough product on there to just kind of give me a finish. I'll pop on my nude lip gloss and I'm out the door, throw my glasses on and I feel like I'm a little bit more pulled together. What beauty tip did you learn from a woman in your life? My mom was a whiz with the lip lining brush. Everybody uses a pencil, I use a pencil, but back in the day, she would get a tube of lipstick and a long arm artistry looking brush with a really fine point and she would circle it around in there and if you went and looked at her lipsticks, they'd be hollowed out in the middle and she would make this perfect line on her lips and then kind of feather it in and then she'd fill in the rest. And I would watch and watch and watch. And when I use a brush, I am always just kind of, especially if there's someone around, I'm just waiting for them to be like, wow, you're really good at that. And I'm just like, thanks. You know, my mom taught me how to do it. You good? Yep. Stacey, you good? I'm good. Edge control is a whole thing with curly girls.